Hello again, not such a big gap between updates this time. Uh, since last time then when I had the track bed down for the main line, um, I've been laying track and uh, got quite a way on now. Managed to get from the uh, the top left hand corner of the station where the narrow, I should say the small radius is, uh, right round the corner and now we're uh, just coming down this bottom straight, this straight here is directly opposite the station. Uh, it's not very well lit so I do apologise for that. So that's where we're up to now. Nice straight run. This piece here actually is going to be used for speed profiling using some um, Realcom sensors from ESU uh, which I'll be making a video of in future. Uh, but where are we up to now as you can see if I just do that it's a bit better actually you don't get the fluorescent light in. So you see nice uh, straight line that's the um, that's the main line. It's elevated. Is it the same height all the way around the room? It is the main line. So what we're up to now is uh, more or less here. This corner here. And that's what I'm going to do next. Coming into the Woodland Scenics elevated section on the polystyrene. So this curve is 30 inches. Nice, smooth, large curve. Uh, I did want all large radius but uh, Things didn't work out that way, but this corner is nice and big, 30 inch curve. So I'm going to put some super elevation strips in, some can strips, and I'll show you how I do it. Not necessarily the right way, I don't know what the right way is, but this is the way I do it. Right, so we're all set up to put the super elevation strip in, which is here. And uh, when you buy it, it actually has this cut in it here. So what you can do is you can pull this back bit off to make it not quite as high, it's about two millimetres at the edge and it's about a millimetre and a half further in there, so it depends. Uh, when I was reading about it uh, on Wikipedia, um, it's a, obviously the, the height of the super elevation depends on the speed and the radius of the, the curve, the radius of the curve and the speed of the trains going around how high you want it. So what I'm going to do for this curve, because it's a nice 30 inch curve, I'm actually going to leave this on, but previously on a smaller curves I've snapped this piece off, but I'm going to leave it on for this curve. Uh, so what you do, because it's polystyrene, it's very very thin at this end, so what you have to do is uh, get your blade and uh, basically just cut little notches out, cut little V's out, which I'm going to try and do. Uh, I must apologise by the way if the focus goes, the uh, camera's very close so it's probably going to play havoc with the uh, autofocus. So I'm just going to go along every so often and uh, cut some notches into the uh, strip. And I know you can do this yourself, there's uh, tutorials on YouTube to make can strips out of um, plastic card and stuff. But um, I decided to buy this. Oops, just tore that one, that was great. Absolutely change of blade, so uh, just pull all those notches out. Might not be enough, we'll see. And what I'm also doing is layering underneath the cork. Um, one thing I learned at the cork is uh, because it's quite stretchy, naturally stretchy, you can go around a corner quite easily. I'll see the focus is going there. Yeah, <laughs> hope it doesn't do too much. You can go around the corners quite easily, especially on a, a fairly large radius cause, cor corner. It just stretches into place quite nicely. Okay, so a couple of things I found very useful. So I'm sure you'll know about this. Is when you curve. Flexi track naturally. The outside rail ends up shorter than the inside rail, obviously. And it usually means that at the fish plate end, what you get is one side has a gap. So I actually got some of these lockable forceps. See, they look like that. And you can uh, get hold of the rail there. Oops, no, not there. <laughs> you can get hold of the rail and actually pull the rail 
along by itself. And you won't be able to see this, but I get hold of the rail that's coming apart slightly. Lock the forceps and pull it. I can actually pull that back. So you get a much tighter joint. That's about right. It's a very good lockable forceps, I would recommend them. I've got two of these. Useful for lots of things. Uh, so this is a 30 inch curve, this track here. Um, it's actually made, hopefully, if I measured right, so the outside track, this track, is 30 inches. Um, so I put the track center in, it should be 30 inches and we should get a nice curve along here. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> That's the plan. But first of all, obviously, we've got to get the uh, cork in. Got some cork there. Got another... Oh, the camera's on the cork. Another piece of cork here. So that'll go underneath. Now I, I actually found doing the um, the curves very difficult. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I found the curves very difficult to start with. Uh, and then trying to add the super elevation just added a whole new level of awkwardness, to be honest. So that's roughly the curve on there. So I'm going to take the uh, super elevation strip and then I'm going to slot it underneath the cork. It's messy to start with. Okay. Right, so got the end of the track pinned where the straight that leaves the straight part and starts the curve. So now, this is the tricky bit, getting everything lined up. So, I push in the super elevation. Now, I don't know if it's right, but what I do is I... Uh, I get it on the edge of the cork, more or less. Thirty inches is going to be a little too short, really. Just measure this with a pico. So that's thirty inches. That's a bit close to the edge. Because on the curves, obviously, you've got to leave a bigger gap. So. that's 30 inches there, that means the other one's going to be here, a little bit close to the edge perhaps. I think I'll leave it in. I'll just change it later. Okay, so coming into the curve now, oops, slide that under there. So it's, it's tricky because uh, but the cork is flexible, it's a naturally flexible product which is great. And the notches help the super elevation to curve around so you just have to be make sure you put plenty of pins in. Stop any lumps. So, I think what I'll do is I'll put a few extra pins here. Now we're fully into the curve. So, 
There's one thing I like about the uh, Sun Dealer, you just use this push pin thing to push your pins in and it's great. Just put two in here I think. Well, I think in real life the super elevations calculate very precisely. So two millimeters super elevation would be um, six inches, obviously, in uh, real life. So I'll just put another one in, and then we'll stop. This push pin thing, I got this from uh, Gage Master, I think. Good stuff. So I'll just remove the track set so you can see. So hopefully, you'll be able to see that. So you've got the cork, and then you've got the super elevation coming around uh, and a nice curved track. And uh, what you do, you just pick the camera up from this side. So you'll see on this side, obviously, the super elevation sticking out and uh, a little bit of cork there. That's different sizes. So that's the straight part. That's my straight part there. If I thought about it, I probably could have done an easement, but uh, it's just a curve, straight into the curve. Comes around. We've got the super elevation strip. Doesn't look too bad. So what we have to do now is just with a knife just go around, cut the excess off. Oops. Yeah, cut a little bit too much off there. So while I'm at this bit, I'll show you the uh this is the join where the straight goes into the curve and uh, here you can see there's a, it's nice and neat between the, the fish plates. This is where I use my forceps. Once you put, uh, you can lock the forceps onto there and you can actually pull the rail carefully to close the gap and it doesn't damage the rail. Obviously you don't want to nip it too tightly. So it gives it a nice uh, smooth joint. Uh, remember to keep the sleepers you cut off to put underneath, fill the gap in later on. So that's the first can strip put in. So just have to uh, put the track down here now. And um, I've been using the Pico uh, track gauge here for the track distance. So um, obviously the track will be here, but you have to allow a little bit extra depending on the radius of your curves otherwise your rolling stock's going to bash together and I've actually got I've got a, another Pico track gauge with a notch out of it as you can probably see the notch and the notch is for the track the rail can you see the notch? yes, so that notch goes over the rail And that should make allowances so the rolling stock doesn't bash together. That's actually for a 24 inch curve, so I might be able to get them a little bit closer together on a 30 inch curve. So I'll continue doing this anyway. Right, it uh, took a while, but I finally got all the track laid. Right round the loop with the uh, cant strips. Super elevation in where necessary, which is uh, on these curves. Uh, so it goes right up there, round the corner to the station area at the top. Comes back down. Uh, this actually is going to be uh, 
the bridge here there's going to be a tunnel underneath here which I'll cut through for the um, the goods line it's going to go underneath there and round the back of the uh, the main line which is slightly elevated from everything else a couple of things which uh, cause problems which I have to sort out for the future is um, when you're slow soldering the drop wires on there's drop wires when you're doing it on this side this side it becomes very difficult because uh, obviously slope of the roof and everything soldering here what I did is I propped up my mobile phone and used it as a camera to sort of help but it still wasn't the best solution so when I'm putting in the goods line which actually goes underneath here and then around the back of there and it's it's on a, a, a um, it's an elevated section as well so it's on the slope I'm actually going to build all that outside of the loft in sections put the drop wires on and uh, then bring up the pieces because basically it will be uh, built up on plywood again like this is built up on plywood with some dealer stuck on the top and then the track the single track runs on that side over there so it's going to be rather tricky it goes around the back of there and then it starts to rise up towards the end of the loft so yeah it's going to be a little bit tricky but uh, at least I found out that it was difficult to do on the on the main line it's level I'm also going to look at a new way of putting droppers on I really don't like soldering the droppers to the sides of the track it's 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 unsightly and it's it's difficult to do as well I think and as I said especially on that side of the track so I think what I might do is start to see if I can solder to the bottom of the rail cut some of the uh, sleeper webbing away solder on the bottom of the rail obviously you're gonna to have to be careful with the alignment but we'll see we'll see so that's the bottom corner the main line weaves over the uh, the uh, elevated bit down the polystyrene woodland scenix rises comes around here into the absolute disaster this is the uh, the station it's been so frustrating having to move things around to be able to uh, get underneath the boards but that is the nature of a loft I think everyone's lofts like that well most people's lofts like that this is something I've had for a while actually I'm looking forward to getting this out I got the um, Intercity 125 pack from Rails of Sheffield ages ago now still staying wrapped up till I can get around so I'm looking forward to getting that out uh, comes around there's a couple of the uh, the coaches that came with the intercity pack just testing the clearance uh, I've actually made the clearance there uh, about as tight as you can get it there's literally sort of three millimeters clearance I might have to make some adjustments to that so we'll see we'll see <laughs> I hope not the track comes right around there this is the uh, elevated main line and then goes back to there of course so we've laid the track and uh, I've got all the drop wires in um, using the scotch locks for the uh, the drop wires and also the the yellow and the blue as you've I've said before are the main bus uh, and the purple wires here that's the block wiring I'm, uh, I'm using block wiring as much as I can so what I've done is I've used purple wires but I've put these colored cable markers on uh, brown is number one so that's actually block 11 which is this block here um, <laughs> we'll see if it works. So the, the wire is quite untidy at the minute. It needs probably uh, clipping up. I've used uh, self adhesive cable tied bases, which never steer. They always fall off, so you've got to put a screw in them. And uh, that's more of the wiring. And it meets uh, wiring there, which is this big chunk here. Which this is the block cables from the station. There's quite a few blocks in the station uh, and it all comes back here which seriously needs tidying up onto this lump here and I put this piece of wood in which is right next to my desk now I've turned the desk round from before because this desk is housing sorry this piece of wood is housing the um, ESU ECOS detectors which we've got uh, it there I'm only using 17 blocks at the moment. Excuse my phone. And if I can zoom in, I can't show. I can't light it up unfortunately because my work lights run out of power. But as you can see there, there's uh, there's four blocks there. 
So the purple wires with the numbers on uh, for that, and then we go five, six, seven, eight, etc. Down here, excuse the uh, there we go. Excuse the lack of light. Some of the numbers upside down. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 blocks, and it's just one by itself. So uh, very expensive, I know, but I did want real com detecting. So um, when I'm using train controller. I can identify what locomotive is where, uh, and of course you don't. You only get three accessory ports on the uh, Ecos, so you have to buy Ecos extenders, which I've got two of here, which gives you six ports: four on the back and two on the front. Uh, this is not. This is actually wired up yet. The wiring is just about done. Just one final check over. Obviously I've got to clear all the rubbish off the station, make sure there's nothing on the track to cause short circuits. Uh, like a metre rule over there for example, I know there's tools and everything all over the place. So uh, I'm looking forward to testing it out, see if we can get a locomotive going right round. Uh, and to be honest I'm also a bit nervous, I don't know whether it's going to work straight away. But probably, there's going to be a fault somewhere because of... Uh, just the amount of wiring, you know. This isn't as neat as I would have liked. I'll probably tidy it up when I come to put the other detectors in. But uh, we'll see. I know it's an extremely expensive way to do it with the Railcom detectors. But um, I wouldn't normally have bought them all together. But buying the detectors and the uh, extenders, it's, uh, I saved quite a bit of money by getting them from Germany. Um, now, I've bought from Lockshop before. I have mentioned Lockshop before. And... Um, they were the cheapest by far, the cheapest I could find online, including shipping. So the only problem is if you pay by credit card in, a, in, in pounds, your credit card company, well my credit card company charges a conversion fee and a handling fee, so it uh, adds up the price. So what you do is you use a, a third party money transfer company, perfectly legal, uh, and this, they charge a flat fee. So I used a company called Transferwise. Basically, you pay them, and then they pay the company in euros, and you pay a two euro fee, two pound fee, sorry, and that's it, flat fee, two two pounds, and there's nothing else to pay. So uh, saved quite a bit of money there, doing it that way. Anyway, I think most of the wiring's done. It just all needs tidying up. Need to clear the truck of all the debris. So while doing the wiring, I uh, obviously spent quite a bit of money on the, the ESU components. The, the detectors, the uh, real comb detectors, but uh, could we just buy some of these Freightliner heavy hole hoppers, which I've seen quite a few reviews on YouTube, and everybody seems to love them, and they are a really nice wagon, I must say. The detailing is superb, and uh, they've got a proper weight to them. They really are a very heavy, chunky wagon. They're, they're great. The principal reason I bought these is because I've been waiting for Backman to release the new class 70 which they've got coming out every time I look it's uh, unfortunately it keeps getting put back I think it was supposed to be released in August and then it was put back to uh, October November and I believe I need to check this that the current uh, schedule is, is sort of January February next year which is a little disappointing so I bought 10 of these looking forward to getting the class 70 pulling them round it'd be great uh, it is a logo which I quite like uh, but you just have to keep waiting, I suppose. Keep waiting, uh, and obviously, it means I can build up the uh, the funds because having bought these and the uh, detectors and the Ecos extenders, I'm totally skint now. So, <laughs> especially with Christmas just around the corner, I think that'll be it for this year. So hopefully next time, which won't be long, fingers crossed, we'll be uh, running trains completely round the mainline loop. Right, that's just about it for this one, just an update, just to bring you up to speed. Uh, hopefully next time we'll be running trains, once I get everything cleared off and tested. And uh, I'm hopeful, it might only be a week or two, I haven't got a lot of time at the minute, work's very busy. And uh, unfortunately I've also damaged my knee, which means moving around in the loft is really <laughs> difficult and slow. So, uh, But I'm hopeful within two weeks I might be able to uh, get another video uploaded of the trains actually running around so many thanks for watching and subscribing and i'll see you next time bye for now